Hey guys, it's Ryan, and today we're gonna see exactly how you can stream your podcast with just the items we have on the table here. A few microphones, some cables, an iPad, and the A10 Mini Pro. But before we get into that, if this is your first time here, consider subscribing and also hitting that like button because that helps us out a lot. Okay, let's take a look. All right, so let's first go through what we actually have on the table here and uh, kind of how simplistic it really is. On a few of my other videos, I've given you a couple different ways to get audio into the ATEM. Surprisingly, you don't really have to have an external mixer, but it is actually kind of a good idea after my initial testing here. It's probably a good idea to get an external mixer for a couple reasons, but we'll go into that a little bit later. But first, let's take a look at our setup and see what we're working with. Okay, on the back of the ATEM, as we know, they gave us a pretty minimal selection of audio inputs, two eighth inch inputs. And I might have said this in a previous video that they were a balanced input, and I was actually mistaken on that. They are unbalanced inputs according to Blackmagic. But what these inputs actually are, are stereo inputs, unbalanced stereo inputs. Now, I'm not exactly sure, there's gotta be a mic pre in there somewhere that uh, allows you to boost mic gain, there, it just, it, there has to be uh, to boost that up to the proper levels. <laughs> but you can't have, technically can't have a balanced microphone preamp, so I'm not exactly sure how they're doing it. Uh, I'll have to look into that and, and get back to you guys. So let's look at what we're, we're going to be using today. We have four of our tried and true SM58s from Shure, just basic vocal mic, right? I've got four cables over here that go from XLR to eighth inch. And then I've got these guys, which are going to allow us to patch into both sides of that input. Then we've got our iPad and of course our A10 Mini Pro. So let's take a look at all of these components that we have and go through the process of how we're gonna plug each of them into the A10. Okay, so let's talk about these cables really quick. First one we have here, this is a female XLR to eighth inch connector, okay? So what this is gonna give us, it's, it's gonna take our microphone signal, which is, you know, off of a mic, it's balanced. It takes just one pin, so it unbalances it and send it, sends it to this guy. So let's open up this, this one here. I just got this at my local um, audio shop. This was made, they, they custom make these. There's Mogami 2314, okay? And a really good cable, Mogami makes great cable. And then what they've done is they've taken the output, and it's just a single conductor cable with the ground, and they're taking pin two. So pin two hot is what they're taking right here. And then they're jumping pin three and ground right here. So this is ground, this is pin two, this is pin three right here, okay? So they're just taking that and they're, they're jumping the ground and pin three. All right, so it unbalances the signal. So this company makes these kind of cables specifically for um, camcorder recording. So it's so over like a shotgun mic or something like that. So if you're running a like a DSLR and you have a shotgun mic or something like that, like a battery powered shotgun mic, then this kind of cable will work. So we're using it. Let's jump over to this eighth inch side. So here is the inside of this guy. Now this is a TRS tip ring sleeve, but what they've done is they've taken this cable here. You can see it right there. Can take it and they've they've combined the tip and the ring together so it's sending the same signal to both sides and then obviously the ground is going to this guy so you've got your ground here and your tip and your ring are soldered together accepting that signal this is the other cable that we're going to be using and this is from hosa which makes okay cables they're not the greatest but they work and this is a trs to dual TS female and it's what we call in the bigger version of this where it's all quarter inch and these are like quarter inch male is we call this an insert cable basically what it's doing is it's taking the tip and see the tip comes out right there in this one and that's to send to something and then the ring this guy right here returns it if we had this into analog gear the tip would send the signal out to an analog piece of equipment and then uh, like a compressor and then return it on the ring. Kind of interesting. But in this case, what we are initially doing and what we've kind of confirmed the uh, ATEM back here does 
is when you split that input, it's taking the tip side and the ring side. So when you plug in a microphone that's, let's say we just plugged in one microphone to the ATEM using our normal female XLR to this eighth inch, it's sending the signal to both sides of that input. Even though it's an unbalanced input, it still has the left and the right side. So it's sending that same signal to both. Then the magic happens, I don't know what. But so we're using this guy to get two inputs in, one coming in on the left side and one coming in on the right side, which the left would be the tip and the right would be the ring. So that's what we did. We had one and two in on here and then three and four on the other one. So now we're gonna take a look on how we're going to hook everything up. All right, so first we gotta plug in our microphones. So we're gonna take all of our cables here and we're just gonna plug them in one at a time. Okay, now let's go over to the ATEM and get them plugged in on the other side. Okay, so here we have the back of the ATEM and we are literally just going to take these guys and plug them in to mic one and mic two. And that's what's gonna split that out for us. You are going to hear when you move this, if you're monitoring, you will hear some crack, crackling, a little bit of crackling, not much, but a little bit. So just be aware of that, it's okay. Just, you don't wanna be like moving these cables around a bunch during the broadcast. So now we're gonna take these guys and we're just gonna plug them in. Now remember, we've got our mic one coming out here and mic two coming out here. And tip, or the black one here is gonna be one, two, and then mic two will be input three and four. So make sure you're plugging in the correct cables here. So we're gonna go one, two, three, and four. And now we are all hooked up. All right, so here we have it. We have all four of these mics plugged into the ATEM. We've got mic one through four. So one, two, three, and four. And now that we have these set up, we need to go into the software and tweak a couple things to make sure they work properly. All right, so here we are in the software. And as you can see on mic one and mic two, we have actually split that signal. So there's one, there's two on the meter, there's three on the meter, and there's four on the meter. What we need to do though, is if we go and we try to adjust the input gain on the microphone preamp, it's gonna adjust both. And we don't want it to do that. We wanna have individual control. However, the magic inside of this thing does it, you have two gain controls. So we are going to go into our settings and go to audio and then we're gonna to go to split audio and we're gonna split mic one and two. And that is that. So now we have each mic on its own individual channel. If I do a tap test, we've got mic one, that's coming in on its own channel, two, three, and four. They're all coming in on their own channels, which means we have our own input gain, however it's doing it. Uh, we have our own delay functionality. We have our own EQ, dynamics, you know, compressor gate limiter. We've got our own fader. We've got our own pan control, and we have our own on button. Something interesting about the on button is if we actually go to the physical hardware itself and we hit on, you'll see in the software that it turns both our mics one and two on. We don't really want that necessarily. I mean, that's a good thing at the beginning to turn all the mics on. You just hit two buttons and four mics turn on. So if we hit input number two, now it turns on our mic three and four. So that's good when you wanna turn things on now, but what if this guy over here, on mic three is way too loud and you go to hit the volume button. Uh, we have that control here on the ATAM, so why not use it? Well, if you try to use it, it's gonna turn down both one and two or both three and four. So it still acts as a pair as far as the hardware is concerned. Let's zero these out. And then let's look at what we can do to make sure that our gain structure is good. Now inside the software, we can do a lot more things. We have individual control over everything. So our on, -off, on and off function, we can do that on, an, on a channel by channel basis. And if you see, if I turn our mic two or four on, it doesn't show up on the ATAM. I don't know why, just note that, that two mics might be on without you knowing it. So what we're gonna do first is we'll get some 
we'll get some gain out of these. I'm going to turn on mic one. I'm going to talk into mic one and turn up the gain or adjust the gain to make sure that I have a good level. So I'm pretty close on the mic. You know, I'm, what, a couple inches away, but hey, that's pretty good. So let's do check, check. Hey, hey. One, two, one, two. I'm going to bring it down just a teeny bit so it's just tweaking into those yellows. You know, yellow, sustained yellow. Probably not too smart, but hey, we want it to get pretty close there. So check, check. Hey, hey, one, two. We can also look at our meters on the side there. I mean, we're hitting about minus 19, which is okay between minus 19 and minus 15. I think we'll be good. And so I'll go through and do that for each of these mics. So let's look at our processing to see how we can make this sound a little bit better. All right, so I got my microphone on here. I'm going to throw a roll off on there immediately. Oh, that's band two. I don't want band two on. I'll make band two a peak. There we go. So band one, I'm going to bring this up to about kind of like what we did in the in the All Things Audio video is where I'm going to kind of set this. So uh, I'll start around like 150, and then I usually try to cut, oh, let's use band two, please. So band two, let's get that a little narrower, and we'll kind of get that boominess out. So if you can hear around right there, we'll cut that out. That cleans it up a little bit. And then I don't really hear much in the mids, but let's see what we got. So uh, I'm going to narrow that down again. It actually has a pretty narrow bandwidth, which is nice. So let's see. Uh, check, check, check. One, two, I hear maybe a little bit right there. I'm not going to cut it much, just a little bit. Uh, and then I'm going to give myself a little bit of presence. So I'm going to do on band four, we're going to get a really wide band here. And then I'm just going to bump it just a teeny bit of 5k not much yeah somewhere around there hey hey one two okay so that gives us a little bit of presence now we're going to run over to the compressor and we're going to put a little bit of compression on and as you can probably tell there's plosives but they're not as bad because we put that roll off in so that's that's a plus right uh, so let's go to our compressor here and we're going to just put that in and as we can already see we're getting some gain reduction there which is nice and for this I usually do pretty quick attack not not all the way but a fairly quick attack uh, you know and then a, a very short hold and release time and the reason why is because I want that to just grab those peaks and pull them down and then immediately let them back up not super sharp but you know so when I go like this and then I go like this, it's all kind of the same level. And it's you can see the gain reduction happening, but then you come back down here and you're still the same. But when you go louder, it still keeps it, you know, where it needs to be. No expander gate. There's no real reason to do that here. Uh, so I got that compressor dialed in pretty good. Yeah, 2 to 1, maybe a 2.5 to 1. We're not going harsh on this. We don't want to be a very harsh compression. So we want to keep that relatively smooth. Uh, threshold, I didn't adjust it because it's pretty good. Like we're hitting you know, minus, between minus 5 and minus 10 is what I'm seeing there. So we're going to keep that there, and then we'll go down the line, and what we'll do is we'll just copy these, <laughs> these settings over. Now, I haven't found a way to actually copy these settings. You have to just go in and do them individually. And then don't turn off your ATEM because you'll lose them all. So, yeah, that sucks. Come on, Black Magic, let's get on that, please. Oh, the last thing we need to do on our compression before we go to the other channels is if you see here on the input, I'm hitting, you know, minus 15 and minus 10 on the peaks, maybe minus 15 RMS. Uh, I need to, because we're reducing the gain here, I need to adjust this. So that's called our makeup gain. So I'm going to take our makeup gain and just bump it a little bit so it's hitting the exact same levels as our input gain. So uh, that's about right. Maybe I'll bring it back just a teeny bit to be on the safe side. Hey, hey, check, check, one, two. Now let's bump it up. Check, check, one, two, one, two, one, two. Hey, 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 check, check. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to go put this across all these mics. So obviously with these microphones, you're going to have to set your delay right here uh, on each of them and delay them to whatever your main camera is. So if, 
If you have like uh, a close up on the main presenter, main host, you probably want to delay things to their microphone if you do have or to their camera, their main camera. So let's set up our iPad. So I'm going to switch over to the iPad here. And you can use this as your um, your playback. So you can play back audio clips, you can play back video clips if you want, because technically it's an HDMI input. Uh, so you can do a lot of things. And I have this uh, program. It's it's uh, called um, Go Button. It's from QLab. Uh, Figure 57, I think, is the name of the company. And they make this for show productions. Uh, they have a Mac-based version that works really well. Uh, but this is all they have on the iPad. Now, you can run things out of like iTunes or whatever other program you want to run things out. And you can run YouTube videos. So we're going to do both of those things here. Now, I've got this uh, example show. This is the one that comes pre-installed on here. So it has all their sounds. But first, what we have to do is we have to turn on that input. And instead of having like auto follows video, we let's let's go ahead and just turn it on. So now we've got audio coming from the iPad. Let's just test it really quick. Oh yeah, rim shot, nice, okay. So, but what we're gonna do, that was a little loud, so let's turn that down. Hey, that's pretty good. So if I talk into this mic here, and, hey, uh, what did you say? Uh, oh, that was too bad. Oh, there's four of them. And then we've got, Woo, yeah, Woo. yeah, okay. And then that fades all the cues. So that's a that's a button that, uh, I don't know if you can see me hitting those. Nice, or we can play some pre-show music. Ah. Oh, the beautiful morn. Uh, we can we can pause that. We can go to two. Ladies go to two. and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Hey. So, anyways, that's something we can do on the iPad. Now let's go, let's go grab YouTube and play something there. All right, so let's go back and play a video. We'll play off of here. We should bring it up and start right into it. Hey guys, it's Ryan. It's hey, there it is. The top five features that are on the ATEM series of switches. What ugly so mug the is that, Mini, eh? The ATEM Mini Pro and the ATEM All Mini right. Pro ISO. So, ooh, that's a fun face. So anyways, you can run video, you can run audio clips, you can pretty much do whatever you need to do off of an iPad. Uh, you can do it off of a computer as well, and then have these four mics plugged in. And with this setup, you can run your entire podcast without an external mixer. But, <laughs> there's a couple reasons why this it's a good idea to have an external mixer. So let's start with these microphones. I'm going to turn them all off. And if you notice, I still have the audio up from our program send. So I've turned off, you'll see in the software, I've turned off all the microphones and I still have the audio up uh, from the ATEM. It's not muted on, on my edit right now. So it's pretty quiet, right? If I turn on, let's just turn on one microphone in the software and you can hear it. Now this microphone is on, but you can hear it. One, very, very faintly, there's a 60 cycle hum. And two is that hiss, that noise floor. It says So if we add another one, it gets a little bit louder with hiss. We add another one, it gets even more, and then it just builds upon itself and gives us this annoying noise floor. And that just means they're really dirty inputs which is annoying. Now one on, if you're running one in a line level configuration from a mixer, you'll probably be okay. It's, it, you won't be able to hear it as well. Okay, so as you can hear, we have that annoying, like I'm on this mic, all these mics are still on, and there's that annoying hiss. And you're not gonna have that in a more professional mixer. You're just not. It's gonna sound nice and clean maybe a teeny bit if you have some compression in there. Now, is this something you could do in a pinch? Yes. If this is all you have, you can do this. It's cheaper to buy a few cables than it is to go buy a mixer. 
but for like a hundred bucks, you can buy a relatively cheap mixer and a cable to get, to get you by. So that about wraps it up. That is how you can stream your podcast with just the ATM and a few cables. Now, obviously these microphones wouldn't be sitting here in front. I gotta say it because some trolls gonna come along and you wouldn't put your microphones like that. Yeah, I understand. You put these in front of the people, kind of a round table situation. That's what, we're, that's what you do, right? So that is it. We kind of just did a practical use case. If this is all you have, it can be done. Uh, I would say probably not your best bet, but you know, give it a shot. See what you think. Now this is with basic, your, you, this is your basic, uh, decent quality still dynamic microphone. So we didn't, this doesn't supply any kind of phantom power to microphones. So using a condenser mic, probably not gonna work unless you have some sort of external preamp, like this guy. This is this is the uh, ART or ART Studio V3. It's a tube, tube MP uh, microphone preamp, so it's got a little tube inside there. Sounds okay. You know, this is, a, this is a regular microphone preamp, right? So it is going to have a balanced input and a balanced output. You might run into some issues with a balanced output. So what I would suggest with this is if you have even more cables, and this is kind of a secondary thing. Not only do we have four microphones going into here, I've got three different cameras going, all with microphone inputs. So you could technically run up to, let's in this configuration, if I've got three cameras, I could run up to um, seven inputs. And if I have another camera instead of a computer or an iPad input, that gives me eight microphone ins that I could do with up and down volume control on the surface itself. Not too bad. Now that's gonna wrap it up there. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, please subscribe, thumb up us if you can, and then uh, we'll keep kind of going down this road in a few videos coming up and seeing exactly what we could do. I'm gonna bust out another mixer and hopefully we can integrate that with our ATEM to do kind of more of a professional uh, shoot, let's say. The biggest thing though is comment below. If you have any questions about our setup here uh, and what I've done, what your what your thoughts are on it, um, put it in the comments and I will do my best to answer. So thanks for tuning in guys and we'll see you next time. <music>